Well, it was the second of these that I've been to. I was fortunate enough to go to the Denver conference two years ago. To be honest, I've always avoided those conferences. I've always thought they've been very American heavy uh, and always really focused on cannabis. And clearly we have wider, uh, wider issues to talk about than just just cannabis. So I was really surprised when I went to Denver that um, the the depth of the conversations were were strong. The issues were broad. They were looking at a whole lot of things more than just cannabis. And actually, there was a degree of sophistication around the drug policy debates that were happening there that we haven't seen over here. So when I saw it was going to be in DC, uh, a part of the US that's legalised cannabis, I thought. Yep, I better get to that one. Great. Well, there's a, there was a ton of interest in what's happening around the world, and I think this conference was actually uh, quite well attended because everyone has their eyes on this big prize, which is the U, the big UN drug hui uh, in April next year. Um, so it was very good timing that this conference was being held in Washington DC. Um, uh, that's, that's good for two reasons. One, it's the seat um, of the US government in remembering that this is a government that for a long time um, has been the world's drug warriors. Um, that's beginning to change. And also DC is a, uh, is a part of the US where they've changed their cannabis laws. So with all of those kind of things combined, it was a neat little place to go and join all the, all the people around the world who are and I think there were over 70 countries um, at this conference that were looking at this moment in time, which is uh, for the first time in 20 years, the UN is having a serious look at drug policy. You've got um, uh, four states in the US that now have legal regulated cannabis markets. Uh, you've got developments happening in Latin America, real strong demand from Latin American nations for change. Uh, and then around the world, you've got other innovations that are happening. It's good to put some of the Kiwi stuff in context and so some of the debates that were happening in the US aren't relevant for us, you know, they're, they're specific to the US but there are some lessons I think to be learnt and I think probably the strongest lesson from me or the re one thing that was re really reinforced for me is the need for people involved in drug policy reform to broaden the networks of people they work with, that the, the issue isn't going to progress if you just keep talking to a room full of reformers. Um, and, and over there they're connecting with uh, communities of colour, so the Black Lives Matter, they're talking to faith communities, the Latin American communities uh, are getting involved. They're trying to make this a broader movement and I think for New Zealand that, that has to happen. You can't just have a handful of people who want to free the weed being involved in this debate, that this is a debate for poorer communities in New Zealand, for Māori who are who are the most affected by drugs and, and bad drug policy. Uh, for more conservative groups, those grandparents who are raising their grandkids because the parents you know, have problems with drugs. Uh, education groups that are worried about the drugs in schools and the new kind of substances that kids are sort of are exposed to but struggle to know, well, what, what do we do about this? So the need for New Zealand to broaden the stakeholders we work with to, to, to really take that strong message that drug policy right now or drug law uh, is not working, it hasn't been working for, for 40 years and it has to change, but not change because we think drugs are safe, but change because drugs are harmful and our current interventions aren't doing anything around that. So that really reinforced it for me.